all pros, but it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a good time. All right, guys, the different, the main difference between a bioactive versus vivarium, bioactive is one or more or more cleaners, which are known as the tritivores. So we're talking springtails, isopods, beetles, millipedes, all of the above. While um, vivariums are planted live plants inside a uh, enclosure, which you can make into bioactive, um, but that's for a completely separate video altogether. Okay, guys, these animals right here, I just want to go over real quick. Okay, we do have certain isopods right here, which are some of my personal favorites, as well as they're some of the best ones that you can possibly own for actual cleaners. And these guys will do a wide, wide array of enclosures. Right here, these are springtails. Okay, you kind of want to keep them in here for a little while so that they can get cultivated and start exploding in population then you want to add them to your enclosure all right these guys right here classic everybody loves these guys the, these animals are hardy beyond belief these guys i'm going to go with the scientific here it's called parcellio lavis the color phase or also known as a morph is called dairy cow these guys are native to the u.s they're actually native to here in florida which is one of my personal uh favorite aspects about them because i am a native native individual um, some of the most versatile of all of them. And these guys are going to be probably one of the best in almost any enclosure. These guys are called powder blues. They're also known as Persilionides pronosis. These guys come in a plethora of different morphs and colorations and patterns, which is really cool. Fast breeders can almost take it bone dry. Obviously they need moisture, but really cool animals. If you guys want more of the colorful aspects, you know, you have your uh, your gem mixes or lottery mixes. Th this is uh, Armadillidium, Armadillidium vulgari. These are what people would normally call a roly-poly. Why? They roll up into a ball. Awesome little guys. Over here, th this is actually a dwarf species. And it's kind of really hard to see. But they're all in here. They're like little... Oh, there's one. That's full size right there. But you take one of these guys, make it miniature, and these guys, they will propagate in almost any cage that's on the wetter side. All right, so these are just a few of the animals that we have here at Underground Reptiles. Um, that being said, now I wanna go over uh, substrates, okay? What I like to do is a very, very easy mix of sand, eco-worth. Uh, I usually like to use oak leaves because oak leaves all isopods kind of go nuts for as well as a little bit of sphagnum moss i like to keep the sphagnum moss a little on the drier side and also it gives them a lot more surface area so that they can hide in and get away from any predators i'll be your animals um now when it comes to benefits these animals the reason why they're called the tritivores is because they break down wastes or any excess matter these animals will dig down will break down poop like crazy Okay, they will eat almost any type of vegetation that you give them, but their protein source, in which these, you'd be very surprised, these guys eat a lot of protein, is actually going to uh, make up your animal's poop. They're going to just destroy it. First few months, you're not really going to see much of a difference, but once the um, population starts to boom and starts getting crazy in uh, numbers, you're going to start seeing that poop break down. Almost, and I'm going to tell you guys something. I have a lot of cages. I have a lot of animals. Um, most of my cages are bioactive. That being said, I because I have to do so much maintenance on animals, this is way easier for me because they break down all of their poop. I have so many of these, and I don't just do isopods. I do a, com a combination of springtails, isopods, millipedes, occasionally beetles. They'll break down poop and leftover food in a few days, which is insane. Um... They will almost never, ever, 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 ever harm your animals. Great side to them. Millipedes will almost never hurt your animals either. Um, unless, for some reason, they have some type of open wound or anything. Then you, you kind of want to be careful because it's, you know, meat. Um, and it's, and it's, it's just, honestly, it's just as simple as that. You keep the wound clean. You keep it all, you know, you keep it all dressed up. Animals will never go after your animal. Ever. Um... Now, this all being said, 
a lot of people, they want to use isopods um, in their bioactives because they are cleaners. But for some of you guys who are new into breeding, okay, like let's say crested geckos, isopods do fantastic with crested geckos. They like it wetter. They can dig. They eat up the excess food that the uh, crested geckos leave over. Uh, leave over. These guys, if you're trying to breed crested geckos, some of the best ones to do are always going to be your dwarfs and, and your springtails. They will never touch your eggs. Yeah, you'll see them all over your eggs, but the thing is, a lot of eggs, if you don't get them quick enough, they start to get fungus. These guys will eat the fungus, which is fantastic. Granted, I always, met, I will always, always, always say, take your eggs out as, as soon as possible. But if you leave them in for a day or two, they will take care of them. Um, now, there are isopods that are more protein-oriented. So if, let's say, you have a tegu or a monitor, these guys will eat up their excess poop. That would be Percelio lavis or Percelio scaber. Um, Percelio nides prenosis, I'd have to say, is the go-to for almost any enclosure for almost any animal. They propagate like crazy. They break down food like crazy. They have high metabolisms. They can take a beating, as in you can keep it dry, you can keep it wet. They'll survive. Great, great, great thing about them. Um, you can do it for frogs. You can do it for toads. Um, granted, the bigger the animal, as in the isopods, they will be a little snack. So you have, you have to keep that in mind. Um, bigger cage, obviously more animals. Great thing, though you can kind of co cohabitate most isopods together. So you can have like a whole cluster of them all together. And thank you guys.